This is Daniel from Visionary Teaching, and in this video, I am going to share three easy ways to get your entire class engaged at the same time and answering your questions together during lessons. So to keep updated on the latest great teaching ideas, hit the subscribe button and, vis and visit visionaryteaching.com. So this video is a companion piece to a blog titled, How to Get All Students to Respond Using Pinch Cards. And you can find the direct link to that blog post in the notes below. If you don't know, a pinch card is simply any old card with some answer choices. This would be for multiple choice. And students respond by pinching the letter of their choice if I was answering A and holding it up for the teacher to see. Um, so we're going to talk about three great, very inexpensive, easy to make uh, pinch cards that you can use with your students. Because basically, we need to stop relying on the traditional classroom model of teacher asks a question, students raise their hand, teacher calls on one student who provides an answer, and the rest of the students check out. It doesn't work, it's not engaging, and honestly, when the student does get a turn, he or she knows that they can check out for quite a while before they get called upon again. We need to give our students lots, lots and lots of repetitions and opportunities to interact with each other and with us during lessons. So how do we do this? Um, I'm going to share three different pinch cards that will do this. Increase engagement, which decreases behavior and gives students, again, lots of those repetitions. So first one. If you're using pinch cards, you might be using a true-false. That's kind of popular. Student would answer true or student would answer false by holding it up. I feel like I want to do you one better. Um, true-false is okay, but remember, um, most of the time there's a correct answer and an incorrect answer. I prefer as a teacher agree or disagree. It's more open-ended, it, it factors in opinion, it factors in educated guesses sometimes. So we want students to be able to answer agree or disagree. Another version of the same thing, students might uh, have a, a check for agree, an X for disagree. They can smiley face, sad face. It doesn't matter as long as everybody has the same thing. Because when you're looking out there as the teacher, you need to be able to scan and know that agree is on your left side, disagrees on your right side, so that you can you can gauge the room. So that's agree, disagree. Um, a great follow-up question is why? Why not? So next, again, I already showed you the multiple choice pinch card. A lot of you might use the clickers uh, programs or apps, kind of like, um, I think they have, they have clickers, they have Kahoot, those kind of things. Those are great if you have the technology. This is the analog version of this. You can carry it with you anywhere. Students in the hallway, on the bus, uh, in the cafeteria, wherever, can answer multiple choice, A, B, C, or D. Personally, I like to, for this, for the multiple choice, project on the screen using PowerPoint or such. Um, I like to have the actual question up there and the answer choices available. So the third one that I'm going to share, um, this is pretty popular when I'm training teachers. It is the emoji strips. So you see here, this would be the Facebook emojis. I would ask an opinion question and students would all respond and tell me if they liked it, if they loved it, if it shocked them, if it made them angry. Um, so that's one way to do it. Now, I don't use this particular one much anymore because as I understand it, there, there actually are some copyright implications for the Facebook emojis. But a couple of other examples, students can draw their own emojis. Certainly no issues with that. Or I like these stickers. Now, this isn't totally free, but you will be free and clear to use them. I actually, I went on Amazon and got about 600 of these stickers uh, for about $13, I think, $13, $14. And you can use them. They're the same six. Just again, make sure that the students put them in the same spot. Now. A couple of things. One, we want to make sure that we allow for processing time. You know, you always have that one student or those two students who are the quickest to raise their hand and answer. Um, the other students might let them. And then what happens if one student holds up their response? The others are kind of looking. So I like to build in processing time, right? Um, some students just need a little more time to think about and consider their answers. And we want to reveal our answers together. So I might ask a question like, uh, 
So how are you feeling about Daniel's uh, vlog post right here? All right, so stop and think about that. Do you love it? Do you think it's cool? Is it is it making you blush? Are you are you surprised? All right, so everybody think. How do we feel about Daniel's blog post? We're gonna all reveal together in three, two, one. Very good. So that's that's just a way that we want to have our processing time and allow for our students. So for more details, visit the blog post that is linked below. I'd love for you to share some of your favorite pinch card ideas in the comments section below. And be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay abreast of future visionary teacher ideas and visit visionaryteaching.com for plenty more free resources and ideas. Happy teaching.